Hi, I'm Liz Rice from The Cilium Project, which sets the standard for cloud native networking and security. We've just released 1.15, which brings lots of new features such as gateway API support for routing traffic into your cluster, session authentication for BGP, lots of improvements to Hubble to help you debug network problems, a new provider for installing with Terraform or OpenTofu, and lots of scalability improvements. Cilium Cluster Mesh can now support over 500 clusters. Cilium Tetragon raises the bar for runtime security, providing observability and enforcement at incredibly low overhead. So scan the QR code now to find out about all of the Cilium activities this week and to sign up for the brand new Cilium Certified Associate exam. Have a wonderful KubeCon. Hello, everyone. My name is Clemens. I work for Microsoft, and I'm on the CNCF Cloud Events project. On behalf of all of us in the Cloud Events project, I would like to extend our huge thank you to the entire CNCF community for supporting us in the graduation of the Cloud Events project. Our journey doesn't stop here, but uh, unlike other projects, we're going to take a very measured pace um, because it's, Cloud Events is a, is a set of uh, conventions for interoperability. And our job as a project is now to keep that foundation for stable for everybody who builds on it and while we're still adding extensions. We invite you to uh, adopt Cloud Events in your projects, and we will promise you that we're going to keep that foundation stable and to be very conservative about substantial changes. And there's an area where we are iterating very rapidly, and that is X registry. Um, we, after we were done with the core spec, we were thinking about how to register event things and event sources. And out of that, we evolved a universal registry uh, coming from the Cloud Event Schema Registry API um, that now can handle you know, endpoints and message definitions and schemas and many more. Thank you for supporting us, and we wish you a great conference. Hello there, this is Katarina from the Envoy Proxy project, and today I'm going to present you updates for the Envoy Proxy and its fellow projects, Envoy Mobile and Envoy Gateway. Let's start with the exciting updates for the Envoy Proxy project. We have added HTTP basic AUF extension. We have switched to a new codec type for H2 connections, which greatly improves security. Apart from that, we have added a new protobuf hashing algorithm, which reduces config parsing time on startup by 10 to 25%. It's now possible to drop a certain percentage of traffic from Envoy in the new Drop Overloads API. And now let's go over to the exciting updates for the Envoy Mobile project. Envoy, Envoy Mobile binary size is now substantially smaller. We have added XDS support for Envoy Mobile Android and iOS libraries. LPN selection, H3, happy eyeballs, explicit flow control, and platform certificate validation are all getting production canaries of both Android and iOS. And now let's go over to the exciting updates for the Envoy Gateway project. The projects now support OpenID Connect authentication, basic AUF, H3, proxy protocol, and the most exciting news, the project is targeting V10 release in March 2024. Thank you and have a great KubeCon. Hi, I'm Mike Coleman from the Falco project, and I'm here with a very exciting update. We are now an officially graduated CNCF project, and we could not be more excited. We want to take a moment and thank everybody who helped Falco to fly, including our users, contributors, maintainers, and of course the CNCF. We also want to pause and recognize the considerable contributions of Chris Nova. Nova's work on Falco was foundational, and we would not be here today without her contributions, and for that we are forever grateful. We know the project going forward will be different without her, but we are committed to upholding the values and principles that she instilled. So what does the future hold for Falco? We're looking for deeper integrations across a wide variety of developer touch points. We want more detections, richer signals, deeper integrations with things like version control systems and cloud logging. If you'd like to help with that, come and find us in the project pavilion where you can talk with Falco contributors and maintainers. Well, that's all. Have a great KubeCon and I hope to see you around. Hi KubeCon. If your goal is to implement full observability, but first you have to deal with collection of logs, metrics and traces and profiling, and you care about processing capabilities, this announcement is for you. My name is Eduardo Silva, the creator of Fluentbit, a high-performance telemetry agent. With Fluentbit, you can solve data collection and processing by also integrating data from Prometheus, OpenTelemetry and eVPF tools. Today, we're announcing Fluentbit version 3, 
which comes with exciting new features like high performance, new support for HTTP version 2, gRPC, remote write, extended processor for logs, metrics, and traces, and new metrics collectors for macOS and Windows. Thanks to our community, Fluentbit has been deployed more than 13 billion times. A heartfelt thank you for your support. And don't forget to visit the Fluent booth for a special gift, your very own Fluentbit t-shirt. See you there. Here's the Flux project update. The Flux team loves improving our GitOps tools for continuous and progressive delivery. Because Flux is used at scale by major clouds and enterprises, security and performance are really important to us. Recently, we completed our second security audit, and the big news there is that there are no CVEs. Thanks to the CNCF, the Open Source Technology Improvement Fund, and Trail of Bits for keeping Flux safe. Scan the QR code for the blog post and full report. In December, we cut our first generally available release, Flux 2.2.0. As of this recording, we're at version 2.2.3. We have overhauled the Helm controller reconciliation model. It is more declarative, efficient, and reliable. And the benchmarks are looking really good. We've also improved the observability stack, sharding across controller replicas, and so much more. We're here in Paris, so swing by the Flux booth, say hi, and check out our QR code for our full list of talks and activities. Hi, KubeCon. My name is Ulrich Vasilev, and I'm the Harbor Community Lead. In December, we released Harbor 2.10. We started working on the SBOM integration. We also added a new interface for setting up robot accounts to allow them full access, so you can implement all your infrastructure needs. We also added the GDPR-compliant audit logs. In Harbor T11, we're going to wrap up the SBOM integration so you can bundle up your generated SBOM with your OCI artifact. The major update here is the upcoming distribution release version 3. Just keep an eye on that. As every other open source project, we need your help. If you want to contribute to Harbor, regardless if you're an individual contributor or organization, scan the QR code and join our upcoming community meetings. And don't forget to attend our maintainer's track to learn more about the project and to hear about our roadmap. During KubeCon, you can find us in the afternoon at the Project Pavilion area. Just stop by and say hi. Thank you very much and have a great conference. Istio, the world's most popular service mesh, is now even better with Ambient Mode, which will be in beta in our upcoming release. Ambient uses a lightweight shared node proxy as a secure overlay to provide mutual TLS, metrics, and layer 4 authorization policies, and integrates with optional per-workload layer 7 proxies for traffic routing. By removing sidecars from the data plane, we decouple the lifecycle of Istio from the deployment of your application. And what's more, memory overhead and CPU usage is reduced by over 90% in many cases. We remain committed to sidecar deployments, and we've reduced the size of our sidecar image by 25%, saving 5 megabytes of RAM per sidecar. Istio has 55 active maintainers across 15 different companies. In the past 12 months, there were 10 companies making over 1,000 contributions, with no single vendor exceeding 25%. To learn more about Istio, visit our KubeCon kiosk, check out our contributors' booths, or go to istio.io to see how you can get started or get involved. Hi, I've been a great buddy. CTO at Canify and Keda Maintainer. With Keda, you can auto-scale applications or schedule Kubernetes jobs based on various metrics or external services. You can scale to zero and much more. Last couple of months, we spent improving our authentication story. So we have a solid support for all major cloud providers. We also extended our monitoring stack. Right now, we expose Prometheus metrics, OpenTelemetry, and newly cloud events. We are constantly working on improving core and performance of Kedal. We also worked hard on Kedal internals and scanning mechanics. And for the future, we are considering various options. Predictive auto-scaling, scanning out storage, or maybe different set of resources. If you have ideas, opinions, or input, Please reach out. We have community meetups every two weeks. We have a Slack channel. So please join our community and enjoy KubeCon. Hi, everybody. This is William Morgan, one of the creators of Linkerd, the world's lightest, fastest, and most secure <laughs> service mesh here today with your KubeCon 2024 
Paris project update. Joined by my friend, Linky. Hi, Linky. All right, two exciting announcements for you from the world of Linkerd. The first is a release of Linkerd 2.15, which adds mesh expansion. That's the ability for Linkerd to take your off-cluster applications running on legacy VMs or elsewhere and connect them into the mesh, establishing communication that is secure, reliable, and observable, and totally transparent to the pods within your Kubernetes cluster. That's a really big step for Linkerd. The second announcement is the upcoming Linkerd 2.16 release. Are we gonna be using Linkerd's Rust-based microproxy technology to build ingress? to build egress control, or to build something else entirely, you're gonna to have to find out by coming to talk to us at the Linkerd Project Pavilion. We'd love to say hi and tell you all about it. Thanks, that's it for Team Linkerd. Enjoy the conference, and remember, Linkerd forever. Open Policy Agent is the general purpose policy engine that unifies policy enforcement across the stack. This year, we plan to release OPA v1, which notably includes some changes to the Rego syntax. The new syntax is available in pre-v1 releases of OPA today, and you can use the OPA format command with the new Rego v1 flag to update your existing policy files to be v1 ready. Also use the OPA check command with the same flag in your build pipelines to make sure the policy files remain v1 ready in the run-up to the release. Read more about OPA v1 today on the OPA website. This is Alex, and I'm excited to tell you what I've been working on. First, we continue to make improvements to the validation and mission policy support. We've also made a number of usability enhancements to the Gator CLI, external data provider cache, and expansion templates features. We've also addressed some corner cases, such as namespace exclusion for the audit from cache feature, and we've introduced a new API that will help with replicating data for referential policies. Finally, we've migrated our observability SDK to open telemetry from open census. Come and join the community on GitHub and Slack. Hi, I'm Travis Nielsen, Rook Maintainer with IBM. Rook provides storage for Kubernetes. It does this with a three-in-one solution where you get block, shared file system, and object all in a single cluster. This means you could have a read-write once or read-write many volume, as well as an S3 endpoint all in the same solution. Rook is an operator that manages the data layer, whereas Ceph provides that enterprise storage solution that's been running in production for many years. Rook is a graduated project. It's all open source, and we've always tried to do the right thing for the community. So since the last KubeCon, uh, we've had a number of updates, including Multis networking improvements, uh, DR solutions for CephRBD and CephFS, as well as new features for our KubeCuddle plugin, and a number of other engineering improvements. Rook 1.14 will be coming out soon. Hope you'll try it out. Check out our website at rook.io, or come see us in the Project Pavilion in the Rook booth, as well as come to the Rook Maintainers talk. Hope to see you there. Thanks. Hello, everyone. Vitesse is a cloud-native, distributed, and horizontally scalable database. It is built around MySQL and has been adopted by many in production, like Slack, GitHub, or Vinted. Since the last KubeCon, the Vitesse team has dedicated significant efforts to integrate foreign key support. Now, Vitesse supports foreign key managed mode for uncharted key spaces, enabling users to leverage foreign keys alongside other Vitesse features such as vReplication. Additionally, we have now introduced native support for point-in-time recovery and made comprehensive improvements to both query compatibility and automated recovery. Thank you for listening. We hope to see you and chat with you in the hallway. In the meantime, you can always learn more about Vitesse by coming to our maintainer talk. And if you want to join your community, you can scan the QR code. Thank you and have a great KubeCon. Hello. This is Xin from SIG Storage. Let me tell you about our SIG. Saad and myself are co-chairs. Michelle and Yang are tech leads. SIG Storage ensures that persistent volumes or ephemeral volumes are available for your applications running in the Kubernetes cluster. We have some exciting updates for you. Rewrite one's pod PV access mode is now GA. This ensures that only one pod can write to the volume at a time. It can be very useful for stable workloads that require single writer access to storage. Node span secret is now GA. This enables volume expansion on the node where the underlying storage system requires the credentials to be passed in. We have a brand new feature, volume attributes class. In addition to resize, now you can also modify other attributes such as IOPS throughput after the volume is provisioned. Come to our KubeCon session to learn more. Thank you.